everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters and I have a special video for you today. Today I have the complete build and painting of my brand new Andy's Hobby Headquarters 116 scale M10. And this is a little bit different than normal. I didn't do any weathering or anything because I, I got my final production model. I didn't have any decals uh, available. So what I did is I went ahead and just used some masks and masked off stars temporarily. So what I plan on doing, in the next couple of weeks, I should be getting the decals in the box and everything else in, but I'm also going to be getting a whole bunch of aftermarket stuff from a, at least four different companies are going to be making aftermarket stuff for this. And what I thought I would do is in the next video, once I get all that stuff, because I plan on loading this up with bags and tarps and uh, sandbags, hopefully hedgerow cutters, all kinds of stuff like that that I want to put on onto this vehicle. And then I will do the weathering once I get the real decals and all those accessories. But this video is going to be really good because this is going to show you all the tips and tricks on putting the M10 together. Now, it is a great fitting kit. Uh, but I have a few little things to speed up, so like, like doing the tracks. Uh, there's a lot of tracks, as you know, like on any armor kit, and they're fully workable. So I give you a little tips and tricks on doing the tracks, the interior, all that kind of stuff. And then in a few weeks, I will go ahead and do the weathering and the rest of the stuff on it. Plus, once we announce all of the aftermarket stuff that will be out on this. So I think you're going to enjoy this video. I had a lot of fun building this kit. It is rock solid. Uh, I keep saying that throughout the video because it's amazing. This thing is so tight and so stiff the way it's been put together with all the bracing and stuff. It's just an incredible, incredible kit and I think you'll love it. Now this kit is due to arrive here in the United States within the, uh, probably the next month. So production is starting on these and as long as there's no delays at port because we are going into the holiday season, we should have them in early November. So, uh, Sit back, relax, and watch the uh, the next about 40 minutes of this beautiful kit going together. So, let's get started. Okay guys, let's start off building the brand new 16 scale M10 from my company Andy's Hobby Headquarters. So first thing I want to show you is we've got the bathtub style hull and it is greatly reinforced here. We know sometimes that these bathtub style hull can come out of the machines kind of warped because there's so much plastic, but with these extra supports here, it keeps it nice and straight. Now what I've done right here is I've gone ahead and I've uh, drilled out all of the holes required by the, uh, the instructions and that is because we need to attach these bottom plates right here. And these bottom plates are different between the M10 and the M10 Achilles. So they are, like I said, a little bit different. But once you drill the holes into place, these will get mounted in there. And there's a few other little minor things that get glued on as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over because there is an escape hatch that we need to put in here that has detail on it. And so you need to attach, let's see, these two pieces go together just like this. And then it'll get glued up from the bottom down here. So you'll be able to, oh, actually this way. You'll be able to glue that in and see the escape hatch inside there. Also, I need to put the, uh, the plug in here, just like that. And also one more stiffening bar right in through here. This is going to add some more rigidity to the, uh, the actual body. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these couple of pieces uh, glued into place because there's not much difficulty getting those on. And then we can start working on the transmission cover. Okay, so I've gone ahead and glued all the parts on the bottom of the hull. And... Also, I've installed the stiffener here in the middle. That's going to give it some nice rigidity to the hull. Now I'm putting in this piece right here, which is basically part of the firewall. And this is the area where the uh, drivetrain would come through on the vehicle. It's all going to get hidden, but it is in there. And also, I've got one side glued in right now. It's also time to start putting together the transmission cover. 
and keep a close eye when you're doing that because it looks like it only could go one way and it should be very easy but it is possible to get this piece on the other side upside down so uh and it's just because of the shape of it there but pretty easy to figure out once you're looking closely at it uh remembering that these go down and these little areas right here are sticking up and speaking of those areas these are where the tow hooks are going to go and they are coated so you can't put those on wrong put a little cement inside there and then work it into the the shape that is in there and it'll kind of click in there glue both of those on in a moment i've also started to assemble the uh the back half of the vehicle and i still have to put on like the little tow hooks got to get those sanded and then once i do all of this will get fitted right into place just like this. You see how it snaps right into place there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, finish off the uh, the front transmission cover, get the, the rear plate sanded and all put into place. And then the only other thing I'll do after that is this piece here, which is the floor. It kind of pops right into place and fits right just like that. So I'm going to get all of these pieces glued into place and then I can start working on the bogies. Okay, so I've got the lower hole up to that point completed, and now I'm going to show you how to build the bogies here. Now, I'm showing you the actual sheet from the instructions to give you just a quick idea how this is going to go together. And what I've done in this little plastic container here is this is all the parts. And we're going to take all of these parts and turn them into three bogies. Now, each side obviously is made a different way, and that is so that uh, they always go in the right position. So the wheel has to be in the back on it there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start assembling them here, but I what I suggest to you is to do them assembly line and do all three for one side all at the same time. And it just makes it go together much quicker. So let me set all of this up and I'm gonna show you how it all goes together. Okay, got the, uh, the beginning parts set up. And first step is to take our suspension piece that uh, holds the springs on the other side apply cement on the the edge right here and get this plate glued into place and we will do that three times once we do that we can take our suspension uh, balut springs here and push them inside here and with that we can also go ahead and glue on the top this piece Oops, just like this. And you're gonna get three of these. So I'm gonna put all three of these together, let this dry for a minute, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, next up, we need to attach these two pieces together. And just like that, there's a little notch there. Make sure you have enough cement on here. We'll go back and sand this after that is dry. This is part of the arm that holds the return roller. So you wanna make sure this is glued into place very well. And if you push it tight enough, you get rid of most of your seam on it. So make three of those now. Next step is to glue together the top spring. And it's just a matter of putting the two pieces together, just like this and letting it dry and sanding it so get three of those together and also we need to glue together the top return roller up there and it's an a and b side very easy pop those two together let this dry and then we can sand out that seam in the middle so we'll get three of each of those done now okay now we are going to glue together the arms that hold the uh, the wheel in place. Now there's a little shaft right here that I've put glue on both sides here. And it also calls out in the instructions to go ahead and attach your wheel right now. What I'm gonna show you is a way of doing it without attaching the wheel right now, that's gonna make it a lot easier to paint. So you wanna get this glued into place, take the, the shaft that holds the wheel, do not put glue on it. Just put it in there as a spacer for right now. Glue it together just like this. Lay it down on your table, push it flat so you've got it even, and let that dry. And there is a uh, another side. So there's two different sides 
of the uh, the suspension arm right there and you can see there's an a and b and that's up there make sure you keep them straight so i'm doing all the a's first and i'm going to keep them separate and you've got to flip flop them when it comes to putting them on either side of the vehicle it's very simple you just gotta that's why i'm doing it in these assembly patterns like this at three at a time i'm doing all three the same way that way you don't mess up and make them the wrong way uh, like I said, if you follow the instructions, you'll be okay. So I'm going to get all of these arms glued together and let all of this dry and come back and show you the next step. Okay, now it is time to put all these pieces together. So we have our little main unit here, and I do want to show you this in the front. There are four holes. This is the front of the bogey. Be very careful as you're putting it together to make sure these are facing forward because the other side is not going to have anything on it. And this part's going to be pretty quick and easy. We're gonna put a little bit of cement up on the two middle holes and I'm gonna put a little extra cement on this front wall here. We take this piece, flip it around, glue that into place, and then I have to run a little extra cement down the crack there. Once that is glued on, we put a little bit of cement up on top here in these holes and then we can attach our little guide here looks like a spring that goes up on top just like that that's now glued into place okay now with that done we can go ahead and attach these arms which do not get glued into place they actually are meant to move so we need to place them in there just let them hold in place there and now we need to attach the front and back of the bogey and remembering that this piece right here points the direction of the vehicle so you want to make sure you put your front and back on accordingly because if you put it on this side it's for the one side of the vehicle if you put it on the other side it's for the other side so make sure you keep that in mind while you're assembling it so the first thing we need to do is attach this piece here this is for the back this is where it gets mounted into place and when you snap that on there of course we're going to glue it as well it's going to hold this piece into place so no glue is required on that and then we will come around on the other side here and glue that piece on so both pieces will be fitted in here just like this uh, so i'll go ahead and get some glue on this piece right now okay now that uh, i've glued the front and back plate on we can put these arm bars on here these are the ones that are going to hold the actual road wheel remembering we did not glue that into place and because there's enough room down here on the bottom you can just flex this every bit so slightly, snap it into place just like that. Turn it over, grab the other side, making sure these bars are sticking straight up like this. And with a little flexing, snap that into place. And then you will have your working suspension just like that. And it's strong enough that I mean, you could pull it apart if you really wanted to, but it's strong enough not gluing it just to have it just that way that it's gonna work really well. Now, as promised, I'm gonna show you how we can do the road wheels without having to paint, you know, mask or anything like that. So this whole bogey is basically ready to paint. And what I'll do is I will glue this onto the hull. Uh, actually, there's one other piece right here. This piece here is the, the bar that goes on the bottom down or the little plate that goes on the bottom that will catch the bottom of the hull. We got to glue that into place but what i'll do is i'll glue all of these onto the hull and we can paint them in place and what i'll show you now is how the road wheel assembly is so here's the road wheel center and what i would do is i will paint this olive drab at the same time i'm painting the rest of the lower hull get all of those painted up ready to go and we have our rubber part and it's in two halves and the way it goes on i'm going to show you dry fit first what I will do is I will put this together like this, not glue it, and then take my time and sand off any of the little burrs I have, anything like that, get it all smooth. Don't glue it. Actually, there's a little bit more right there. Separate them and then paint each one of these all on a big sheet, all with the black color that we use for rubber, like rubber black. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and this will all be olive drab. We'll be able to glue these two together on both sides will have a perfect seam around the front and you'll have to do a little bit of sanding around the middle of this 
uh, where you actually attach the two sides when you put the glue inside, if a little bit comes out. But it's very easy to go back over there with a hand brush or your airbrush and fill in that crack. And that's basically what I did on this right here. It was very quick to go ahead and do that. And you see we get a perfect line right here. We don't have to worry about getting paint on the uh, the olive drab with the black. Now, the other way is, of course, you can do it that way. You can hand paint each one and kind of spin it because it is movable. But I just think it's a lot easier to paint them all individually, glue them together, take your airbrush, just lightly go over it. And then when it comes time, you pull this out, slide that in the middle. Actually, what I should do is I should show you two on one that's already glued together. So like this, I can snap this out just like that and so reverse it now so we've got our built up road wheels slide our axle in the middle of it there and we'll slightly flex it line it up drop it into there and it is all ready to go Okay, now it's the time to attach those bogies. One other thing I should tell you about, there is a little panel here on the bottom uh, that rides like this that you glue on. It's like a little bolt pattern. That's a very simple piece to glue into place. And you're just gonna go down the line and fill each one of these with a little bit of cement and then a touch on the bottom down here. Obviously this is carrying the majority of the weight of the vehicle, so we wanna make sure this is attached nice and firmly. And before you put any weight on it, make sure it sets up really well too. So I'm gonna get all six of those on right now. Okay, there is what the uh, the lower hull with all of the, the bogies in place, all painted. Uh, just took a couple minutes to paint the individual wheels and then snap them into place. And now we're gonna work on the tracks. So here's the bottom of the pad and here's the existing link. And so what we do is we would drop this piece into here and then we would take the end connectors here and all you have to do is just rest them, making sure that that little bolt is sticking straight up just like that and watch how quickly and easy this goes together so with our cement put a touch into the hole there on either side and I'm using just Tamiya cement on here I give it a little tiny brush just on the leading edge of that and then carefully so we don't get it on the existing track next we'll just put a little touch right there take our inside pad and what I like to do is I like to grab this right here to keep it all from moving and if you're good enough after a while you just drop that into place give it a little pinch the cement sets up and you've got your next link and then watch how easy this is going to be so the in connectors here or the teeth the guide teeth are molded four to a piece here and what you can do is once you get enough length of it going right here because you don't want to glue them on individually it takes way too much time that way You'll line up the very first one just like this, 
and just go down the line and just line them up into the guide horns. Camera's a little bit in my way, but there we go. You can see what I'm talking about. So I would just take it like this, line those up just that, and then just a little touch of cement. Try not to keep my hand in the way. Just on the crack where that guide tooth meets the end connector. Make sure that they are straight up and down. Let them dry for a few minutes and you have all the guide teeth. And that's that's how you'll get this right here. So works out very, very quick and easy. And a um, little bit of cutting and cleaning, but you can see they go together pretty quickly once you get all of that done. Okay, what I'm doing right now is I am putting on the last couple of links on the run of tracks. Now, what I did was I painted everything else black just quickly, just so you could see what I'm actually doing here a little bit easier. So we'll put the last little guide horns on, but you'll notice I've made them as one continuous piece of link. And I, I will paint these uh, better after I get all the links into place. But I wanted to show you how I'm going to put the last couple of ones on. And you basically just have to flip the track over like that. And you can get the last link right here in the middle. No problem. So let me let this dry. And then I'm going to show you how they will go on the vehicle. Okay, we now need to build the uh, the fender portion that has part of the sponson on it as well. And you'll see these little, little pieces right here, and they correspond to all of those on the other side. So I built one side up. It's very easy. Just there's an angle already built into the plastic here. It's just a matter of gluing in the pieces there. Then we flip it around and drop it into place just like this. It's a little cement down the inside edge. And the same thing will happen with the fender fender goes up front here this is one thing i do want to show you guys uh, at first i started putting the uh, the piece on like this like it like why is this not fitting right? and then i realized it actually goes like this up inside so keep that in mind if you start messing around with the inside of the fender here that it does go up and you see how well it fits once it actually goes in the right position too so what i'll do is i'm going to go ahead and glue this up and then we will have this fender piece here which will drop right into place right here i'm going to hold off on gluing it first uh because I, I do want to paint them both since we've already painted the lower hull here so let me go ahead and get this other side built up Okay, before we do any painting um, and final assembly here, I want to do a little test fitting. And uh, I built this one side up here with the ammunition racks. None of this has been glued into place. It's just all kind of like sitting there. Uh, show you how this is going to go together without the racks in there. You can see all the little notches, how they line up. So basically that's going to get glued in just like that. That's got a really good fit to it there. Then we have our firewall, which will basically tie all these pieces together. And it's got little grooves that'll go in. And it's going to line all the way up in there. I was testing a little while ago, and it seemed to fit really good. And then finally, we will glue these little pieces in, like on the other side. And, of course, the rest of the racks there. So it's looking like everything is fitting the way it's supposed to. Very, very happy with that fit i mean the way it lines up right here is very very nice and there is supposed to be a gap right here there is a gap right here that is where the actual hull of the vehicle lines up inside there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to finish up the uh, the ammunition racks over on this side and then i will go ahead and paint these and glue them into place okay i've got both sides of this sponson on and they're nice on nice and tight and keeping it really, really rigid. It really stiffens up the entire thing quite a bit. Now, you've also noticed too that I've painted the uh, fiber tubes that hold the three inch shells, a uh, kind of like a flat black color. It's a little more of a dark grayish black than just flat black. And also just went and painted the back in here uh, 
just black just for a shadow effect honestly all of this didn't really need to get painted because it's going to get cover over with the body but I had the paint out might as well do it anywhere still debating whether about putting any white up front here it's really hard when you're looking down through here with the gun and everything else to see anything down there i think it's just going to be a dark shadow but we'll see as we get a little bit further along in there so what i'm going to do is i'm going to push this off to the side now and i'm going to show you what i'm working on now so here is the upper hull and these are the little uh, little round circles here that are molded in. And that is where these bosses are going to go. And this is the weld part that has the little bit of weld and the circle on it. Does not have the actual screw head inside of it, or the bolt head, I should say. Uh, that is what this will look like here. So I've put the bolts on this one already because all of these bolts get put into place. These are not going to get completely bolted over because we have to put this uh this rack for yeah it goes just like that this is the rack that'll hold the uh the grousers on it and that'll get popped right into place there so you don't want to put all those bolt heads on because it will not fit on over that so there's quite a few of them there's 12 on each side so i'm going to get the at least the welded part on on both sides right now and then i can go ahead and glue this into place and the next step will be to glue the front end on to the tank just like this and also work on the front hatches so let me get these parts glued in there and i'll show you how the hatches go on and how it'll attach to the body okay here we are with uh working on the upper hull i've gone ahead and i've attached the bolts on the side here on both sides i've included the rack for both sides and put all that on there also glued on the front plate and attached the uh the two hatches right here i still do need to be put the periscopes in but i think it's going to be easier to put those on after all the paintings done because they are made out of a clear part now what i'm going to show you is how the rest of this is going to go together and i'm actually going to slide the lower hole down because i think it acts as a nice support and we want to keep everything obviously as, as square as possible because it's got to fit to the uh the bottom here and you see how well this will click right in here uh, before we do that i've also assembled a few parts that make up the uh, the radiator diffusers back here this will actually just slide in just like just like oh. yeah actually that's in right there <laughs> there it goes and then we can place this on top this will get fitted in there you kind of see how it clicks then i've got the rear plate that'll get glued in just like here and this piece here is what i want to show you the most so we want to carefully glue this and you can see there's obviously going to be a seam on this that we need to sand and fill so we want to make sure this goes in as tight as possible line it up really well and then i will go ahead and putty that and fill that with uh, uh putty of course and then sand it smooth make it a nice uh, even surface and then after that i'll go ahead and attach all of the doors on the back here and these are uh, available to be made openable so if you do decide down the road someone creates a, a 3d printed uh, engine or anything like that you'll be able to put it inside there but you can see how quickly it's coming together now on this oh also there's one other piece so this is the angled piece for, that goes down here in the back underneath all of this stuff actually right on top just like yeah just like that so you see everything kind of fits together really well uh now it's just a matter of going down and taking time and really making sure everything lines up perfectly as i start to glue all that so i'm going to start doing all the gluing on that i won't actually attach it to the lower hull yet i'm just using it as a support because when i say support because like this piece right here the firewall is actually keeping this kind of up in the air so if you don't it can kind of fall through but let me go get all these parts glued on and then i'll come back and show you the next step okay here it is here is the upper hull uh mostly put together meaning uh there's tools and some accessories that need to be painted separately that i will leave off the vehicle for right now but if you take your time and slowly line up each one of the facets including back here the kit goes together absolutely wonderfully everything fits very very tight and because there are so many facets and braces inside here uh it is rock solid it is like you know the old term built like a tank well that is how this is right here it is very very secure in a solid piece uh i sanded most of this turret ring right here uh, just a little bit more i need to do inside there i was going to prime it but i don't want to accidentally get any primer on the inside of my tank here uh and then i'll paint the entire thing olive drab in a few minutes 
Okay, now with the lower hole mostly done, it's time to start working on the turret here. And I've assembled a little portion of the turret. The uh, the shells are on there in there right now only for effect. They are not glued in. I just kind of placed them inside there and I see actually one fell out. We're going to obviously paint those all separately, but I wanted to see how this fit and how it actually will go together. And you can see the only thing I've glued in here is this stowage rack because this stowage rack will get painted the same color and there's more gear that I need to put on the side. But at this point, I'm more or less testing how everything and what's the easiest way for the modeler to put this together. So to start off with, there are ammunition bin racks, I should say, back here. And the ammunition racks go in. And the way the instructions call it out, the instructions are telling you to put them in at this point right now. And that is the correct place where they go. And I, I know why they did the instructions this way, because without it, it's going to be very hard for the modeler to see how it lines up. But don't put them at, at this point. What I want you guys to do, this will make it a lot easier on you, is actually get the top facet into place as well. And once we glue that into place, just like this, you can see how beautiful everything lines up. You'll notice here that there is a little notch and then there is a corresponding notch on the bottom of the, the piece. Now, what happens here is I initially, when I was looking at these, I cut these off the sprue and I saw these little bumps right here. I thought, oh, there should be a slot on the inside here that corresponds that you glue it in. And actually there's not supposed to be. The way it is designed is that this will go in here like this and the bottom piece will go in here like the instructions say but it's actually those are spacers that space it off the wall and you can kind of see back here that it's hopefully you can see it it's slightly away from the piece and that way so these are more spacers than anything else so that is why if you glue this into place it's just a heck of a lot easier to glue the top and bottom piece in rather than just glue the bottom and have it floating there and waiting it's just Put that in and then work yourself around get this facet in and then come back over and work this facet in just like this and you see that it just fits together absolutely beautifully everything was engineered so wonderfully on this that make everything fit in fact just dry fitting it look at the front and the sides and all the other pieces there that you can get the lineup perfectly uh, still recommend doing a little bit at the time and that is mainly so that if you start gluing a facet into place and if you don't have that 100 percent accurate the next one's going to be off so slowly but surely start to get them to wrap around and i think you'll be very happy with it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get these two facets glued on i'm also going to go ahead and get all of the the little grab handles and the little bolts that go on the outside of this i didn't put any of those in place on this because i was like i said practicing how this is actually going to go together i will mount the other racks inside here and then i will come back and show you how we actually put the turret ring into place there okay what i'm doing here now is i'm showing that one uh facet go into place and i'm just gluing these two walls in right here and i know i went really into depth on a lot of uh what some people might think are minor little things but the reason i am is because i get many many questions on model building obviously not just from my kits but from tamia from every brand you can imagine and sometimes instructions are not very clear to everyone whereas visually if you can watch me put it together i think it makes a lot more sense sometimes for me to explain it this way rather than just go yeah do it like this and if you actually see me do it you'll notice that it'll it's not as hard as it is or looks i should say and that's why this video is a little bit longer than some of the normal ones because I really want the modeler to understand how this piece goes together. So you see how that one is glued into place. We make sure that we get it nice and straight and square all the way back. And I'm gonna let this set up for a few minutes. Then I will move on to this one right here. And the reason, and I want to let this dry fully is because let's say if I have something slightly off and I need to adjust it, if it's completely dry, uh, you won't be able to get the next one in. Although this is pretty, Pretty straightforward right here, you can see already. Look at that, look at that seam. It disappears and that is just, just by dry fitting it there. And just wanna be careful. I just want the modeler to feel really safe and secure putting it together, know that with a little information that they won't mess up their turret. Okay, I've built up the turret ring and I put all of the seats in the up position and left the seat pads off because we're going to paint that separately 
that'll get glued into place just like that. But this is all going to be all of uh, drab, so it's just much easier. I also went and just placed it into uh, the turret here, and that is because a lot of these parts sit below or above the actual turret ring. You don't want to break anything off, where if you drop it inside here, you're good to go. And um, I didn't put all of the other pieces on, but I was fitting this off. And this thing fits nicely right into place, too. There are some little holes down here, or excuse me, holes down here and pins down here. Just a matter of lining those up, and you'll get it to fit on right there. Now with the turret mostly done, uh, I started working on the gun. And the gun is very simple to put together. There is a lot of detail and a fair amount of parts for what it is. But once you get these sub-assemblies, which most of these are like two or three parts each, uh, you'll notice that they'll just start to stack together just like this. This will slide down in there. And then finally, you can put the breech on just like that. So get a big piece. Then once that is attached, we can go ahead and attach the sides here which the sides if you look at the way the turret is let's see if i get the right one here it'll basically lock up inside here there's little grooves inside there once all this gets attached that'll get mounted just in there like that now i didn't go into too much depth on having this put together because it was pretty pretty straightforward uh, i don't think you guys will have any trouble putting that together also have assembled the uh, counterweights and the counterweights are mounted to the back of the turret right here and one on the other side like this and they are they're literally just at their counterweights for the gun because this big massive baseball bat of an aluminum barrel was very heavy in real life and they needed to have the counterweights to keep the turret from from tipping too far forward with all the weight of this gun on here so they just had some big giant counterweights that would be uh affixed to the back of the turret so what I'll do now is I will get all of this put together. This is all pretty easy. There's also a hood that will go over the top of this once this is all put together. Uh, and if anything else that comes up that's a little bit different, I'll show you how that goes together. Okay, now I'm going to show you how these parts go together. So I have the turret ring down here. And basically the best way to do it is to line it up with this wheel down in here with that weld line up in the upper left hand corner and it kind of clicks into place and once it does it kind of locks. Uh, there are two more little pin holes that match up with the bottom of the gun which will get put into place after I glue this together and then after that the uh, the mantlet will get put on and then that little hood that I was telling you guys about earlier. Now obviously there's a lot of other little parts that we need to put on. Let's see if this goes like this upside down the other way a lot of other little parts like the little uh little rods and things all that kind of all minor stuff but i mainly wanted to show you how this goes together so let me get this glued on and the the gun into place and the mantlet and then we can attach the big barrel up front here and i'll show you what it looks like before i put paint on it okay now that the uh the ring is attached i've slipped this into place and we'll mount those screw holes in there. Get that nicely set up. And then I can go ahead and glue these tight up against this bar right here, making sure everything is nice and straight and square. So little by little. Now that that's glued on, we line these pieces up right here and they should make a nice tight fit just like that. So I'll go ahead and put glue on those pieces now. And finally, when we put this hood on, uh, just gotta get it to kind of fit like right inside just like that. And you'll see it kind of pops into place there. And once that does, you can go ahead and glue it in. And finally, you have to turn the turret sideways and then you can push the matlet into place. And then of course, glue the metal barrel in. Okay, jumping uh, a little bit ahead here, you know, I'll show you what I've done. So after I finished up the turret, I went and added all the other little accessory pieces, which I'll come around here and show you, like, like travel locks and any other little piece that I had left off up to the build at that point. Also, I went around and cleaned up any of the seams I might have, anything like that, and then I started painting. Now, the majority of it, as you see here, has just been painted the XF62 Olive Drab from Tamiya. Also, I have mounted the, uh, the 50 cal machine gun, which is removable here, but I like having it 
up on there. Uh, you also notice I've painted the shells in the back there. So the shells are painted with a brass for the shell itself and then olive drab with uh, for the tip. Also what I did, I took a, a little bit of foam sponge and just slightly dipped it in uh, some yellow paint and then blotted ever so slightly right on the ends of the shells. Kind of makes it look like some faded off uh, numbers that they put on, letters and numbers that they put on the shell. So a little something like that. Also installed the fire extinguisher, as you can see down here. And then all over the vehicle, put on things like the grousers here, uh, towards the back, the tools. And I'll show you a little 360 in a minute. Okay, now you're going to see stars on the vehicle. Now, I do not have decals for this kit. And uh, this is just the, the final production version that I have to sign off on and say that everything is the way it's supposed to be. But the decals were not ready at this particular moment when they mailed it to me. So I just decided to go ahead and take some masks that I have and just mask some white stars on there. I think it doesn't look right not having the white stars at least somewhere on it okay as we come around and give you a little 360 view of the uh, the built-up vehicle you can see that obviously it's not weathered and that is because as i told you earlier i'm waiting on the rest of the decals to show up as well as i am working with some aftermarket companies to produce all kinds of extra accessories for this vehicle so there'll be tarps and bags and boxes all kinds of stuff to fill up the engine deck fill up the uh, the sides of the turret uh, we're hoping to get uh, a hedgerow cutter and possibly even a sandbag front for here plus figures and just lots and lots of other accessories that are going to look just wonderful on this so what i thought i would do is i make this video about the actual build of it because that's what it's supposed to be about i needed to get this built and um, approved so we could get these into full production and now that that's been done uh i will come back at a later date once i get all the accessories and i'll show you all those accessories put them on the vehicle uh, figures all that kind of stuff and really soup it up then do the weathering and show you how it's going to look once it's like that so this is a perfect opportunity to show you guys the the tips and tricks of how to get this thing together uh easily and then we'll come back and do all that other stuff later on well there you go guys there is a look at my brand new m10 uh, it, like I said earlier in the video, it should be out fairly soon. Well, hopefully within about a month after this video is released and it'll be available worldwide. In fact, I know from England to Australia to Europe, all over Europe, I should say, and the North America, these are available for pre-order. In North America, they're available for pre-order on our website, andyshhq.com, that if you want to go ahead and reserve yourself one, you can do that, as well as the Achilles, which is the next video I'm starting now that this is done. I can go ahead and immediately start the Achilles too. So, so guys, I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.